I haven't been creating any videos for quite some time, I think more than a month or so. Uh, my laptop broke and I had some other difficulties, but I'm back now. And uh, today's topic is process hollowing. So uh, process hollowing is used by a lot of malware samples, so it's useful to know how that works. And I specifically search for a sample that, that uses this technique and stumbled upon this great article from December 2015. And uh, this article explains how a dried example utilizes this technique. And I found the MD5 right here. So that's how I got the very same sample. I will put it uh, a link to hybrid analysis into the description below as always. So you can also uh, follow along. Now, this article will be using other tools than we use today. Uh, but of course, you can try and follow along this article as well. Uh, what is process hauling? Now, in general, process hauling means that the malware sample or yeah, the malware yeah. sample will carve out the contents of another process and then replace these with its own code. That way, you, the, the malware may gain some trust, like, the, for instance, certain Windows tools that inspect processes might assume that this is still the trusted process that it was before, before it was carved out and replaced. So this was a way to gain trust. Nowadays, I see it mostly used uh, as an in-memory execution technique. The, I often see malware samples that simply execute or create their own process. Um, so they, they start themselves again and then carve out their own child process and just replace those contents. And that's the same what's also happening with our dried example, but we will see it soon. Um, here's a nice um, image or an outline of how process hauling works. Like the details can always differ, but I think this, those are always the same. You have a destination image where you want your injected code to be. So you call create process and you call that with the flag suspended because if you suspend the process, you are able to modify the contents. And then you carve out the process using anti unmap view of section. So that way you, you empty it. And um, with write process memory, you write the malware code into this process. And then you call resume thread. So the suspended process continues with execution. Usually you need to do some fixes, like you would have to um, set the thread context so it will execute the malware code at the right entry point. But um, yeah, I think those are the most important ones. The create process with the suspended flag, the unmap view section and the right process memory uh, portion so that you see now you can i will also link this pdf it's okay it's nice um let's see how this looks on our dried example so i will start process explorer so we can check this out and as i told you before it will run its own process Let's set the highlight duration to five seconds so it's visible, better visible. Okay, that's the dried example. We run it. Now you can see that here it starts a child process with 3368 SPID. And then the parent process terminates and the child process continues. So this is something you might see in a lot of samples and then you might assume that this has been, uh, that this is using some kind of uh, process hollowing technique. Okay. So I killed this. 
we will let this run. I think that's quite useful to see the processes here. And um, today we will be using API monitor to to unpack the in the code that's been uh, injected into the hollowed process. So that's uh, API monitor is still in development. So there's only an alpha version available, but still I think it's quite good. Okay, it needs some time to load up. And um, now let's just search for create process, search for the modules we want to not the right one. I actually want the one from from kernel 32. Yes. No. There it is. Now there are two versions of that create process A and create process W. And the W one is called from the create process A one. So it's enough if we place a check mark on this. And we want the right process memory. It's not found. Maybe up. There it is. Place a check mark on that. And um, resumes, resume thread so we know when it's done. And you can place more um, monitoring. Um, or yeah, like you can place more of them if you want. Uh, for instance, in that article, you will see uh, quite some more calls right here, um, or a listing of the important API calls. And if you like, you can add all of them to API monitor to see how it works. So But we will just do those for now. And I think that should work. We will try. That's on the desktop. Dridex, open up. And now we monitor this. And it's done. We will call, we will call the application here. OK. And we see here's the create process call, and indeed it creates a process in suspended mode. Uh, and there's a write process memory call, and those uh, this one has one parameter that's the buffer uh, with the contents that should be written to the other process. And you can see right here that there's a p file inside. So we should dump this um, buffer. And to do that, we can place a breakpoint. Can I place it from here? I guess not, but we should be able to place it here. Now let's just search for it. Right, process, memory. Now here, right click and breakpoint before call. So if we run this again, it should break on that call. Yes, remove. And we run that again. And we break on that call indeed. Now you can verify with added buffer that this is indeed um, the right buffer we want to see. And here's the address of that buffer. So now we can just open up HXD. HXD can look into the memory using this button for, for RAM. Okay. And we open up DrideX and just go to search, go to copy in the offset 
and we are there. So that's the buffer with the PE file on it. And that looks quite good. And um, if you use a small trick, if you want to know how much you want to copy of that, uh, just click on the minus, you see the next value that, uh, the beginning of the next memory region and the end of that one. So it's uh, 3 to B F F F where it ends. Okay. So we just say select block and set as the end of set uh, 3 to B F F F. Also the length is makes sense. Okay. Um, copy that to a new file. Yes and uh, save that dump to the desktop. So that looks quite okay. We will close this now. Now discard capture. Does this close itself? Nope, so kill it. And um, now we have the dump here. I don't want to start it again accidentally. So let's take a look at it with Potex Analyzer and um, compare the two files. Okay, that's one. And that's the other. So, oh, close. Um, so you can see this is the original dry example, and that looks quite different than the one we dumped. So it looks like we unpacked this file. Um, the original dry example, the packed one, has this large area where there is compressed or encrypted um, data, and I suspect that this is the PE file that we unpacked that is encrypted right here. Um, whereas this file doesn't seem to have any area of compressor pack data. I mean, you cannot be sure. Sometimes people are able to um, encrypt or, or pack their, their files, a the target file, without raising the entropy so much. So. It's just an estimation. Um, but yeah, um, here's also some overlay that's probably content we we just, or, I mean, we just added from the memory. That's not necessary. So we could, we could cut that. But yeah, it looks like we were successful in unpacking this, what um, this thread example. Uh, ran in memory using process ordering. So that's it for today. I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.